Hello folks, welcome to our canal, Channel Jose. Today we're gonna show you, give you an idea how to replace the radiator on a 1998 Nissan Frontier. And this is for a four cylinder automatic transmission. And the first thing before you start this job, you wanna make sure that you got the right radiator so that way you don't start taking components apart and then find out that it's not compatible what you bought to what you have. So another thing, when you're doing this job, you wanna make sure that the car is, or the engine is completely cold. So that way when you start taking off hoses or draining the liquid out, you don't burn yourself that's very important another thing we have done is we have lifted our truck from the front and we're gonna have access through the front so we can drain our liquid when we drain when we remove that drain plug so that way you can actually see where it is located one thing we make sure is that we have the coolant that we're gonna need for this truck so that way when we're finished replacing the radiator we can add the coolant that way we can get this truck back in the road first thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna have to drain all the liquid out and then we can start from there you want to make sure that when you're doing this job, the engine is completely cold. That way you don't burn yourself. And with that said, let's get started. So our drain point is right underneath this splash guard. This is tucked in and we're going to have to peel it back. And then this is the middle of the radiator. As you can see, there's a locking device for the hood. So right on the same area, that's the drain point. It's a Phillips screwdriver needed to loosen it. And that way the coolant is going to come out through there. It's right there. That's the drain point for the radiator. Don't look on the sides. That's just the support for the radiator. And that's another support for the radiator into the frame. And that's the drain point. What we did is we just took the plug out completely and then we just let it hit us the uh, splash guard but if we remove the splash guard it still comes out and then it hits the frame but it still falls straight down into the drain pan so it's actually it works out so we just let it drain out. So what happens if we remove the radiator cover completely or just open it, it comes out faster. So that helps out to drain out a little quicker just by loosening it and just letting it sit there. But we take it off and it comes out faster. Okay, folks, so one thing we want to expose is that we lift the truck so we can expose how we're doing the job down there. You don't have to lift the truck. If you can do the drain point and you can access the drain point without lifting the truck, perfect. You, you don't have to lift it. We lifted it just so to, we can show you what you're looking for. So once we um, lower the truck again to start keeping the liquid to come out, so now we keep the, the drain plug out and we keep the drain pan there. So in case any li more liquid wants to come out, what we are going to do now is we're going to take this air intake plastic out. We're going to take some of the brackets out. This bracket that holds a radiator, this bracket that holds the intake, this other bracket that holds the intake and the radiator. And once we clear this out, we're going to start taking the fan shroud out. One thing you want to do before you start pulling the radiator out, you want to disconnect the hydraulic lines from the transmission to the radiator because those have oil and we don't disconnect those until the end so we don't make a mess. So the less we have those lines disconnected, the better because we don't have oil draining out. That's the last thing we want to disconnect and that's the first thing you want to connect. So with that said, let's clear this out so we can start exposing for the fan shroud. So as we can see, we have removed the air box or the air intake uh, tubes, plastic tubes. So now what we can do is we can um, remove this hose from the radiator, remove the, the, the overflow tank connection so we can take that out, 
wash it and when we put the new radiator back in this is clean and also once we do that we remove this bracket and this bracket Now we can move the fan shroud towards the back or towards the engine. So we have to remove one, two, 10 millimeters uh, bolt. And then once we do that, we can move the fan shroud, pull it a little bit up and then back. And then we can remove this bracket and this bracket. So we can start pulling the radiator up, but we still have to undo the bottom radiator hose and the transmission lines. Okay, folks, so what we're gonna have to end up doing is we're gonna have to pull the shroud and the fan out so we can get to the bottom hoses and the radiator hose. So that way we're gonna show you what bolts you have to, or nuts you have to remove so the uh, fan can come out with the shroud. So those four nuts right there are the ones that hold the fan towards the pulley. So we have to take those four nuts off and the fan has to come out with a shroud so we can expose the bottom. So now that we have taken out the four 10 millimeter nuts that hold the fan towards the pulley, we can pull the, the fan towards the radiator and pull, pull the fan shroud up with the, radi with the fan so that way they both come out so we can expose all this area so we can undo the hoses now. This is the bottom piece of the fan shroud and right here on the bottom there's these two hooks where hoses are hooked onto it so before you start pulling it all the way straight up you want to undo those hoses from here so then the fan shroud can come out straight up so we tilt it a little bit we got a fan out and then we work the fan shroud out so now what we have left is this we have the two transmission lines going to the radiator and the bottom radiator hose connected to the uh, radiator and if you don't want to work too much in the way in the bottom just take it out from here going into the coming from the block or going into the block take it out from there and pull the whole hose out and then you can put it on later on in the bottom so it's easier sometimes to take it out from there than working all the way down there so then what we do is we take this bracket off this other bracket and then the last two things you want to take off is that transmission line and this other transmission line so we can avoid getting fluid out of those lines so we can um, that'll be the last thing to come out and the first thing to go on the radiator and the new one so now what we have done is we have put we're going to put two drain points for the oil one for this transmission fluid line and one for this other transmission fluid line. So when we disconnect this one and that one, hopefully they drain into those pans so we can capture the oil. So now as you can see, we disconnected the transmission lines and the bottom radiator, but at the engine, now we can take the brackets on the top radiator off and we can pull the radiator out. So now this is all old radiator and then the, these bushings that go here, we're gonna have to use them. This is one and the other one was here but it's broken off. So we're gonna take this one off and use the other one in the bottom that is stuck to the frame. And then we're gonna take this hose off and then we're gonna transfer it to our new radiator so that way we can start installing it down to the truck. We're gonna change clamps as well. We're not gonna use this pre compression uh, clamps anymore. So now what we have done is we get our new radiator. You want to be careful with the fins as much as you can. It's, it's really hard because once you bend one, is is that's that's the purpose of those fins is so the air goes through and it cools on the radiator. So if you don't have those perfectly, then you're going to have problems on the cooling. So now that we have put one bushing, we put the other one 
and then we can start putting the radiator into the truck and then we can put the bottom hose and then the transmission lines so we put the bushing so they these as take the vibration from the radiator on the bottom so we put this in now and we can start putting the hoses back in that opening and that opening right there is where the, tr the where the radiator slides in and secures itself from the bottom there's no tie down point or screws or anything that just slides in and then it ties down up here so it keeps it from flopping on the bottom and then one thing that we're going to be doing is once we connect those transmission lines to the trans to the uh, radiator we're going to put new clamps because we don't like those uh, one, those compression clamps we're going to replace them with new ones so that's what we do we always replace those with uh, some uh, clamps that we can tie in ourselves now we have put our radiator into the truck and we haven't connected the hoses on the bottom but first thing you want to do is secure the radiator to the frame so it doesn't move around and then you start damaging the fins so you tie in this side and the other side and then you can start connecting the hoses on the bottom and then we can start putting everything back onto where it's supposed to be We have put the two transmission lines going from the uh, radiator to the transmission and then we have tied in those hose clamps and then now we can put the bottom radiator hose to the engine. So now that we have the hoses on the bottom connected, we can put the fan shroud and the fan and start putting it into the pulley, tightening it, and then once we put the fan shroud, we can connect the upper radiator hose, and then we can start adding the fluid to the radiator once we put the uh, overflow tank as well. So you got to remember that the bottom hose coming to the driver's side on the transmission line has to go into these grooves and then this fan shroud goes into the radiator with these guides one in each side so it, the bottom doesn't bolt on it bolts on on the top and the bottom is just guided so this hook or that little leg right there they have to slide into that groove or that opening and this other opening right there so if you don't slide those on you might have that radiator um, fan, that flat fan shroud flapping around and they might hit the fan and it can create a problems in the future so you gotta slide those two legs in on the bottom guide them and then you can attach it to the upper piece but remember we have to put the fan in as well So now we have the fan shroud on, we can start putting the four nuts that hold the fan into the pulley. Okay folks, so now that we have tightening the four nuts for the uh, fan, we didn't need to remove the belt for the alternator, which is on that pulley. So we were able to work with that belt on. So if you need to, you, you can take it out from right here, but we didn't need to. So we tighten it and we work with it um, without taking the belt off. Uh, now we, ha we have to put the top upper hose in and then we put the reservoir, start filling it in with liquid, check for leaks, and then we can start putting the, ad the, up the other stuff on.
So now that we have put everything back on, the, sh the radiators on, the shroud, the fan, and the hoses are connected, and we have the overflow tank on, we're gonna fill it up with antifreeze, and then we're gonna and then we're gonna check for leaks. We start putting the other stuff on. So now we had it uh, all the uh, the coolant and then it's no more going in so we turn on the engine so the water pump starts uh, moving the water the coolant in the engine and it burps the air out because it's the highest point on the engine now so this is a burping tool before we start turning the engine on we want to make sure that everything that we use is out of there so nothing falls into the belts or damage anything so that way we don't end up with a bigger problem so we verified and then we can turn on the engine So now we can verify that there's no leaks, so everything looks good. So now we just let the engine to reach its normal temperature, so it relieves all the air or burps all the air through this funnel, and then we can start putting the cover back on and put all the intake back on. So now what we did is we filled up the radiator, we put the cap back on and we put the reservoir up to the level that it needs to be we cover it so we got the system full and ready to go so what we have to check is to make sure that it doesn't overheat and then we can and now we can put all the intake box back in so everything so everything's back to normal Well, folks, this was an idea how to replace a radiator on a 1998 Nissan Frontier four-cylinder automatic, and it's pretty simple. Uh, we replaced it because it was cracked on the top, on the plastic top, so we had a leakage everywhere. So now with this, hopefully this can be helpful to, towards your replacement. And with that said, uh, the most important part of this procedure is to do this while the truck is cold. And one thing, other, another thing is that uh, you want to make sure you have the right parts before you start doing this procedure because otherwise you'll be in the auto parts for a second trip and you won't be having a good day. For our folks who are watching our video and haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. If you like our video, give us a thumbs up, share it, and we'll see you soon with more videos here in El Canal, El Chano Jose.